Hello everyone, again for the last time possibly. Possibly my last talk in this series of Thoughts for the Day, as I'm sure that many of the regular listeners will have picked this up in the news from the other speakers, as we've come to a time now when church services are getting back to more normal with many of our flock coming back to church. I was thinking about the reasoning behind starting these talks. It was a way of keeping in touch with everyone, giving everybody access to something to do with church alongside our services. Well, at first we had lots of views on these YouTube talks, but I think the numbers are going down now. But I was really pleased at first because I heard from many friends and family abroad who tuned in. But as time went on, they stopped listening as well. I also thought that we were only able to keep in touch with the people who had the wherewithal, the computers, the iPads, the smartphones and TVs. And I was so sad that many of St James' congregation couldn't access the talks. But we are getting back to normal. And thank goodness that we are accessing church again. Now, last week, I was given a little gift from Walsingham and it reminded me about the touch that we have keeping in touch and the difference we make to people. It's a cross with a lovely message and I'm going to read you the message now. It says, as I live each day, May I do my part to make one difference to touch one heart and through each day, may it be my goal to encourage one mind and inspire one soul. I suppose most of us, especially those of us in ministry roles, we hope that this happens all the time because whatever we do in the name of Jesus Christ, we try to follow in Jesus's footsteps, trusting in that whatever we do in his name will reach someone in some way that makes a difference to their lives, their feelings, perhaps their well-being. But most of all, to bring to know and love Christ as we do. It's our faith that inspires and encourages us to share, with, share it with others. We meet in our everyday life many people and it's not always easy to touch everyone. But when I think of those other Christians in the past who we consider to, to be true Christians, such as say Mother Teresa, I'm inspired and I'm proud to share what my faith is and what it means in my life. Mother Teresa had nothing, no worldly goods. I believe all she had was a bucket and she felt that was enough for her to carry around with her. She had no belongings. All she needed was her faithfulness, which is why she said this. I am not to be successful, but to be faithful. Just think of how her simple life, but her strong faith touched millions of people. And she touched hearts and minds and souls. Faithfulness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit and it is praised in the lives of Bible greats like Abraham like Joseph, Moses and Daniel. Jesus placed faithfulness up there alongside justice and mercy. We read about that in Matthew 23. But faithfulness is nothing without love. Going back to the fruits of the Spirit, as set out by Paul in his letter to the Galatians, this is one of the readings I've always been drawn to. It was the text I used for my first sermon after my licensing service. And so from chapter five, verse 22, 
but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. But the fruit of the Spirit is limited without the gifts of the Spirit. Now, one book I use quite a lot, and I think I've mentioned it before, is by David Pawson and called Unlocking the Bible. And in his section about this part of Galatians, he talks about walking in the Spirit. When you are truly living in Christ, yes, you do walk in the Spirit. And as you walk in the Spirit, something beautiful happens. Fruit grows in your life, the fruits of the Spirit. He actually describes it as one fruit with nine flavours. And I rather liked this idea as I was reading this chapter. And he goes on to, de to describe a Christian. He says, you find all nine flavours in a committed Christian. Some unbelievers may have some of the flavours. For example, some will have joy, others have peace. But you will never see all nine together except in Christ and in those who are filled by the Spirit and walking with the Spirit. He says the nine flavours relate you to God, to other people and to yourself. So the first three of those flavours, love, joy and peace, he says they bring you into perfect harmony with God. And I think that speaks for itself, doesn't it? Love, joy and peace. They are the, the fruits that we talk about all the time. The next three, patience, kindness and goodness, they bring you into harmony with other people. And yes, thinking about those, they are the ones that perhaps touch somebody's spirit too. And then faithfulness, meekness and self-control bring you into a good relationship with yourself. And Paul says later on, he says in Galatians, that as you walk in the spirit, the fruit grows. And there's probably two kinds of walking, walking by ourselves, but also walking in step with our brothers and sisters. And yes, we do need both. And that can only be good, can't it? If you think about it, much of our time is spent with Christ on our own in prayer or devotions or in our readings. The Spirit moves us and inspires us and the fruits grow. And if you like, putting it in layman's terms, our batteries are recharged. But when we walk with others, with the Spirit, well, yes, something beautiful does happen. Others are touched by God. And it's so good to be part of that. If we can be the catalyst or the facilitator, or perhaps God simply working his purpose out in us. So, for my last talk of the series, it makes it sound a bit like a TV programme, doesn't it? I leave you with a thought. Can you think of a time when you've been touched by someone? Maybe today or yesterday? Touched by a word? by a deed, by a prayer, by walking alongside. I'm sure you have. I'm going to finish in prayer and I'm going to use my cross again. And so let us pray together. Lord, as I live each day, may I do my part to make one difference, to touch one heart, 
and through each day may it be my goal to encourage one mind and inspire one soul. Amen. So, I hope you all keep well and we'll meet in church, maybe. You never know. We may be starting these off at some other time. So thank you for listening. Goodbye.